Minute 10 Hercules. I, I think we all know the story of Hercules, whatever version you remember. The Disney animated movie, the DC version, the Roman or the Greek version, it's all generally the same thing. And I mean, even after that, this guy has a rap sheet of like 25 other heroic things he did, just like because he wanted to. A major factor in the well-known tragedy surrounding Hercules is the hatred that the goddess Hera, wife of Zeus, had for him. Because while there were many illegitimate offspring that Zeus you know, sired, let's say. Hercules was the son of an affair that Zeus had with a mortal woman. And not just any mortal woman, but a mortal that Zeus wanted so badly that he disguised himself as her husband in order to lay with her and ordered Helios, the god of the sun, to not let the sun rise for 72 hours so that his one last night with her would last. Yeah. So not only is he the bastard of a mortal woman, he's also the product of a forced three day night, which I guess doesn't really bother anyone living in like Alaska or Norway because the whole six months of night thing, not anything weird. Number 9, Odin. Odin ended up joining the Stone Age Avengers sometime after he actually was said to have created the humans on Midgard, which was then known as Aesheim. In doing so, he had disappointed his father Bor, who decided to punish Odin by hurting the humans. Now, as someone who often seems pretty detached from human suffering later in his life, it's pretty wild to think that Odin possibly created them and was perhaps one of the first cosmic beings to actually care for them as a superhero. And I know you're thinking, but Amanda, we all know Odin is super old. Yeah, you know that, but did you know he was this heroic? Because I always find it very surprising myself. Odin ended up returning to Aesheim to act as its protector and also to learn how to better control Mjolnir, which was his hammer at the time. He ended up befriending multiple prehistoric superheroes, joining the Avengers of 1 million BCE, and he also ended up developing a deeply romantic relationship with his teammate, the Lady Phoenix. In fact, it was even revealed that the Phoenix was actually the true mother of his son, Thor, because that's what's happening now. So there we go. In a day, Blue Beetle. In 1964, during the Silver Age of Comics, Charlton Comics revised the character of Dan Garrett, the original Blue Beetle, for a new Blue Beetle series. Charlton's new Blue Beetle retained the original's name, but no powers or backstory, making him a different character. This Beetle was an archaeologist version of Dan, who obtained a number of superhuman powers, including super strength, flight, supervision, ability to generate energy blasts from a mythical scarab that he found during a dig in Egypt, where it had been used to imprison an evil mummified pharaoh, because of course it was, which gave way for the DC Comics version of Jaime Reyes. DC's introduction of Jaime Reyes in 2006 retconned and expanded upon the Blue Beetle mythos, but given that the scarab was found during a, a dig in Egypt, where it was used as an attempt to overthrow Vandal Savage back in the 26th century BCE, yeah, that's pretty ancient to me, okay? I mean, the scarab was created by Nabu for God's sakes. Number 7, Iron Fist. Fan Fei is the Iron Fist of the Stone Age Avengers, also known as the Avengers of 1 million BCE. Fan Fei is actually the reason why the ritual to become the Iron Fist and gain its unique powers was all about fighting Shao Lao in a battle to the death. This wasn't, however, because Kun Lun wanted to challenge Fan at the time and believe she should, you know, be their champion. This actually happened as the result of a punishment. Fan Fei, you see, was a kung fu master who had been trained since birth in Kun Lun. But but her curiosity of the outside world caused her to sort of leave Kun Lun in secret. She came across cavemen who were helpless against the beasts that basically often attacked them, and she decided she was going to help them. Fan sought to help these people by teaching and training them herself in the ways of Kung Fu. However, it was forbidden in Kun Lun to share your knowledge, and when her people found out, they marked her as a criminal. As punishment, her students were brought to Shao Lao and basically fed to the dragon. Forced to watch, Fan Fei went into a rage, breaking her shackles seeking to share in the same demise as her students, becoming deeply distraught. However, when she went up against Shao Lao, she struck the dragon and her fist went right through, killing it and coating her fist in its blood, giving her the power to channel her chi into fiery fists and leaving her with a dragon mark, which, you know, marks her as the Iron Fist. In its six, Dr. Fate. Nabu the Wise was a lord of order and cosmic being who arrived at Earth billions of years ago to take on a proactive role in battling the Lords of Chaos. A cosmic being with near limitless magical power, his spirit resides in the Helmet of Fate and is the source of the great power held by those who wear the mantle of Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate is just the helmet. 
Fun fact, you all knew that. Dr. Fate's origins begin over 10 billion years ago, which I personally think qualifies as ancient, or maybe even older than that, if there is anything older than that. I don't know, my senior year contact teacher was pretty old. But not long after the formation of the universe, were there born two elemental forces, the Lords of Order and the Lords of Chaos. You can kind of see where this conflict is going. On the world called Celia, the Lords of Order manifested themselves, the first sentient race in the universe, and a race of incorporeal magical beings at that. After millennia, circa 3500 BCE, the Lords of Order descended onto Earth and then became Nabu the Wise, who was also an advisor to the pharaohs of Egypt. He's old, okay? I don't know what else I need. I said 10 billion years. I think that's pretty solid. Number five, Conan the Barbarian. That's right, Conan is an ancient superhero who actually also hails from Marvel. Not only that, but he was also an Avenger. Despite technically being a Marvel superhero, Conan is also kind of otherworldly, hailing from the sword and fantasy genre of comics. Although for Marvel, Conan is still labeled as an Earth 616 character, hailing from their main comic book reality. He does, however, come from the Hyborian Age, an old hero from the past. But he was one of the heroes still summoned by Doctor Strange and Elektra when they brought together their own team of Savage Avengers to stand against the threat of Kulan Goth. This went down in Jerry Dugan and Adam Gorham's Savage Avengers series, which I still really, really want to read. It looks super good. It just looks like such a great time. And Conan's presence on the team is definitely part of the reason for my motivation to jump into this series, hopefully in the near future. I have a lot of things to read. And it for Mr. Majestic. I put this here because I like the word majestic, but also this is kind of weird. Mr. Majestic is a Wildstorm comic superhero created by HK Prager and Jim Lee. He made his first appearance in Wild Cats number 11 as a backup story, but he's known for being the strongest superhero in the Wildstorm universe, and he shares quite a few similarities with Superman. But given that Wildstorm is owned by DC, there shouldn't really be any conflict there. Mr. Majestic is originally from the planet Kara and was known as Magistros, but uh, yeah, this isn't like Superman at all. I don't know what you're talking about. Why you saying that. He has two kids, Kanesha and Magistrate, but there was also an infertility crisis in his home world, which resulted in only one child per woman. Yeah, so how do you, how did this happen? Well, Magistros and Coda warrior Lady Xana, who was also later known as other things, it doesn't matter. They were chosen not to breed, uh, but since Coda warriors became priestesses after giving birth, um, Xana's mother pretended that Kanesha was stillborn and then claimed to have given birth to her herself. Yeah, so basically, Kanesha passed off her daughter as her sister, which is a whole. They're old. It's old. It's an old thing. I don't. Number three, Starbrand. Vin is the Starbrand in 1 million BCE. He ends up becoming the Starbrand after leaving his tribe. He left them because he believed he did not belong due to the fact that he realized he was gay. Something that seemed to be unacceptable to his people in that time. On his journey, he sought out a garden he had seen in a dream, which it turned out appeared to be the biblical paradise known as the Garden of Eden. Once he found it, he also found Burke. Also no vowels. No vowels for these people in prehistoric times. The two men became lovers, but would eventually be separated after Burke died in a deviant attack. It seemed the deviants wanted the garden for themselves. The attack resulted in a cave-in, and while Burke did not survive, Vin did, finding the body of a dinosaur who had previously been the Starbrand. Vin was imbued with its powers and fought against those who had killed Burke. However, in the process, this also destroyed the garden. Vin would go on to become the hero known as Starbrand in his time and join up with the other Stone Age Avengers of 1 million BCE. But ultimately, in number two, Doctor Strange Fate. Doctor Strange Fate is the amalgam of Doctor Strange, Charles Xavier, and Doctor Fate. Yeah, they're present in the amalgam universe of Earth 9602, and given that both the Sorcerer Supreme and Doctor Fate are present, I think that this qualifies as ancient. Doctor Fate alone just makes that happen. Strange Fate learned that two keys controlled by access would restore the DC Comics and Marvel Comics universes to their own worlds, which would result in the destruction of the amalgam universe, and therefore, him. So, to keep his universe intact, Doctor Strange Fate recruits Jade Nova, Skulk, and White Witch to capture access and bring him to Strange Fate so that the Amalgam Universe can remain active. But it turns out that he was actually a part of a problem, or a part of the problem. That's a story for another day. But. Doctor Strange, yes, the real one, preserved the Amalgam Universe in a pocket dimension, essentially making it its own multiverse in a sense, but I also bring this up because I, I like the Amalgam Universe, okay? It's cool. Iron Lantern, Lobo the Duck, 
Hell yeah. Number 1. Man Thing Sorcerer Supreme Perhaps even more surprising is a reality where the Man Things rule the planet. Their version of the 1 million BCE Avengers team is filled exclusively with Man Things as a result. One of these Man Things is known as the Sorcerer Supreme on this planet in the reality we know as Earth 91. Unfortunately, we do not get to know too much about this version of Man Thing as he is killed by the Masters of Evil when they come to his reality in Avengers Forever issue number 5 from 2022. What we do know is that, like like Dr. Stephen Strange and many other Sorcerer Supremes, this man thing does seem to possess a cape, although it is a bit shorter than Strange's, I would say. His version of the Eye of Agamotto, or his version of the Third Eye, I'm not really sure what's going on with this, also seems to be something that he has, but he wears inside his chest or on his chest. I think Dr. Strange ends up with a third eye at one point, but he's also got the Eye of Agamotto, so I don't know. Instead of man thing wearing this anywhere else or having it on a chain or a necklace, implying, you know, that this eye is a part of him. Or perhaps it's simply, you know, like I said, just a third eye. And it's just in a on on the chest. I feel like that wouldn't be, I mean, I guess he doesn't really wear it close because he's a man thing. So actually, I guess it'd be fine. Number 10, the question. In the Prime Earth continuity, the question, or a version of the question, is revealed to be one of the oldest beings in the world of DC. This is revealed after we learn that the question was one of the criminals, in essence, that the Circle of Eternity, located at the Rock of Eternity, chose to punish for their crimes against humanity. This group of beings who were punished were known as the Trinity of Sin. The question would go on to become a hero following this. This version of the question is largely a mysterious figure who has not appeared as much, probably because the original version of the character Vic Sage and his predecessor Renee Montoya ended up both returning to the comics recently. What we do know is that the question had his memory erased from history and from himself, with even his face being left completely featureless, so he could never remember who he was. This was part of his punishment, but also done to guarantee that the question would not be able to rise up once more as he had threatened to do originally, since he would no longer be able to remember what exactly he had done and why in the first place. So how can he return if he doesn't even know, you know, why he was doing it in the first place? And apparently, we may never get to know any of this either, unless somebody returns to tell the rest of this version of the question's tale. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, and if you also love superheroes that are surprisingly old, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number nine, the Eternals. The Eternals are simply a group of heroes most people don't often think of, which is why I'm including them here. Despite them coming to the MCU, I would still say there are tons out there who have fallen off the MCU bandwagon recently recently and kind of just weren't particularly compelled to watch this film. So there are still a lot who do not know about the Eternals, which is unfortunate. This is a huge shame, I think, because the Eternals are really a cool group of heroes who have existed for millennia. Initially their origin was that they were prehistoric humans who were basically modified by celestial tech, turned into their own race of beings. Later on we'd get an additional bit of information on their origin in terms of kind of how they worked, how they operated, with them being resurrected by the Great Machine on the regular anytime they died. That's how they were eternal, almost being like kind of androids with a soul in a sense at one point. The Great Machine is actually also Earth, which is both a big blue ball that everyone lives on and at its core, an actual machine, a resurrection machine in part. Its survival is intrinsic to the survival of Earth and all life forms living on it. And it was, up until recently, also tied to the Eternals, meaning that for Earth to continue, the Eternals would also have to continue to be called into existence. The Eternals being ancient heroes were initially the enemies of the Deviants, who were also created by the Celestials. They defended Earth against the Dark Celestials, or they tried to, and have also become ingrained in human mythology, with them being the real world heroes from ancient epics and folklore. Hawk Girl. While Hawkman recently appeared in Black Adam in the DCEU, which has been rebranded with their highly anticipated reset impending as simply the DCU, Hawkman isn't the only hero out there who is ancient among the Justice Society. And no, I'm not talking about Dr. Fate, who also is pretty old. In fact, many people probably didn't even know that Hawkman was really even ancient per se. He doesn't look old, that's for sure, but he is, in fact, not in body, but in soul. Hawkman is the reincarnated soul of ancient Egyptian Prince Khufu Qatar. Carter Hall is only the latest in a line of incarnations of the prince in the comics, and his love, Shearo, was also reincarnated as well throughout the years, becoming known as the hero Hawk Girl and also a 
was Hawk Woman. Later, this origin would be retconned, tweaked somewhat, so they'd actually be even older than ancient Egypt, instead becoming ancient aliens from the planet Thanagar, who simply came to Earth. Their original souls in this version of the tale were each believed to belong to Shra and Katara the Deathbringer, who were both cursed to be reincarnated alongside each other throughout eternity. Number 7. Gaia Gaia is someone that we perhaps don't think of as being an ancient superhero, because well, we just don't really think of Gaia that much. She hails from Marvel Comics and is the god goddess of Earth. Gaia is seen as one of the oldest gods that Marvel has to offer us, being one of their elder gods. In fact, Gaia is kind of one of the only elder gods who could be seen as heroic or good, at least one of I would say I would say she's up there, considering she is one of the few who managed to avoid becoming a demon. She also actively sought out the demiurge in order to produce offspring that would help to rid the universe of the other elder gods who had been corrupted after they became demonic, giving birth to Atom, who then became the demigorge, the god eater. She's probably also one of the oldest heroes mentioned on this list at all, so there's also that. Number 6. Nubia. Nubia is possibly even older than most other Amazons, who are generally known for being old and immortal just standardly. In Infinite Frontier, her story was retconned so that she was no longer a woman held and mistreated against her will for a long time, but a princess reborn in the Well of Souls. Nubia was born from the Well of Souls reincarnated around the same time that Princess Diana was born, and the two grew up often being thought of as sisters. And if you're wondering why I was mentioning that she might be older than some of the other Amazons, that's just because she's reincarnated. So although Nubia in her own form is the around the same age as Diana, she also got an old soul, you know what I mean? She would spend many years as the guardian of Doom's doorway, and would act as a loyal supporter to Queen Hippolyta, even when it seemed that she had betrayed her. In fact, Nubia's loyalty to the Amazons in the current continuity has not failed, and she even recently was chosen to be the new queen of the Amazons. And we're not just talking about the Amazons of Themyscira either, but in fact all known Amazons in existence, as there are actually multiple Amazonian tribes in existence throughout the world. Number 5. Lady Phoenix. Well, I did think that Phoenix was a little too on the nose for my part one of this list. There were some who actually requested her in the comments, so fair enough. Some people want to know more about her. And since she was featured in our thumbnail slash cover photo for that first part of our list, I felt for all you loyal nerds who came to this part too, I should oblige you and tell you more about Lady Phoenix. Who is the woman we featured on that thumb? She is also a member of the 1 million BCE Avengers, also nicknamed the Stone Age or Prehistoric Avengers. Before she was the host of the Phoenix, she was simply known as Firehair, named after her bright red hair, which left her abandoned by her parents only shortly after she was born into the world. Anyone who their tribe deemed basically different in some way was sacrificed in this manner. This was also to be the fate of Firehair, but she was rescued by wolves, so she ended up being okay. She grew up among her pack, but eventually joined up with the Tribe Without Fear, a group of prehistoric mutants. Her own mutant powers would manifest, and she would eventually lose her tribe and become bonded to the Phoenix Force. Ultimately resisting its dark temptations, she would go on to become one of the founding members of the Stone Age Avengers alongside Odin. While it was suggested that Lady Phoenix was actually the true mother of Thor, we learned in Avengers 1 million BC issue number 1 from 2022 that her relationship ended with Odin before Thor was born, with Gaia being Thor's natural mother as we knew before, Freya being Thor's adoptive mother, and Lady Phoenix being dubbed kinda like his bonus mother after she helped Gaia give birth to Thor and saved him from a premature death. And then Gaia was like, you can be mother to Thor too. So that's, we got that all figured out. So what I said on part one is not exactly true. Not his mother. Well, she is his mother, but she's not his only mother. He's got a lot of mothers. <laughs> Number four, Artemis. Artemis was also once Wonder Woman, don't you know? Back in the New Earth continuity. She herself is an Amazon, and despite her youthful appearance, like most Amazons, she's pretty old. In fact, in the New Earth continuity, she was also granted eternal youth as the result of a spell that Cersei had cast upon her. In the Prime Earth continuity, she is just straight up immortal. She hails from the Bana Migdal, which is a splinter group of Amazons all their own. Like I said, there are many different tribes. Princess Diana of Themyscira and Artemis have often been presented as rivals in the comics, with Artemis often being jealous of Wonder Woman and kind of striving to prove herself superior to Diana. But despite this, she is ultimately a force for good and a hero, though her warrior's heart might be a little harder in comparison maybe to Diana's when it comes to her heroic approach. Number 3. Red Sonja Red Sonja is an interesting one to think of as old, considering how she is often portrayed in the comics. But 
like Conan, who I touched on during the part one of this list, Sonia herself is also ancient in the sense that she hails from the past, the Hyborian Age. She was a creation of Robert E. Howards, who initially existed within Marvel, but eventually ended up being moved over to Dynamite when it comes to who owns the right to this fiery, fierce warrior character. The Hyborian Age was actually a pastime in Marvel history, at least that is what we're led to believe based on the fact that both she and Conan hail from the reality of Earth 616. Red Sonia set out on her path to become a fierce fighter at a young age. After she was left orphaned when her family were killed and her people were attacked by a group of mercenaries. Red Sonia hails from Western Hyrcania and often fights to help those who cannot help themselves, even sometimes training those she comes across so that they might actually act as a hero in their own story. She is sometimes also a sword for hire, but generally only takes jobs that kind of fit with her own particular moral code. And she does have a moral code, even though she's a mercenary a lot of the times. Number two, Shazam. Wait. Billy Batson is super old. No, we aren't talking about Shazam. No, not that Shazam. Not the Shazam formerly known as Captain Marvel. We're talking about the wizard who gave Billy Batson his powers and who has also been known by the name of Shazam. Initially in the Prime Earth continuity, we were led to believe that the wizard was simply someone who bestowed powers on Billy. But we'd later learned that he was actually one of the old gods Shazam would actually get his powers from. This truth of the wizard's, aka Mama Roggins, aka Shazam's origin would be revealed after Billy Batson was left depowered following the action of Grail, Darkseid's daughter, who basically cut off his access to his powers by untethering the old gods from his magic lightning. While not a direct superhero, the wizard is a powerful force of good who was even able to help repower Billy from the afterworld in spirit form, finding basically new gods for him to be empowered by. Number 1. Eternal Warrior Marvel and DC are not the only publishers who have ancient heroes. Even Dynamite, now owning Red Sonja, is not the only publisher with ancient superheroes by any stretch. A lot of people have ancient superheroes. In fact, one publisher that was suggested in the comments that has tons of ancient superheroes is Valiant Comics, so I'm happy to be talking to you about that. Great suggestion. This particular hero from Valiant that we're talking about is Gilad Ani Pada. Gilad was one of four siblings granted immortality. He has used this extended time over his life to train up, becoming a master in many different areas of combat. He acts as a hero in the comics, being tasked with defending the Geomancer of any given generation. Geomancers were kind of born in a line, and they're magical heroes in their own right who were chosen to act on behalf of the Earth as the planet's defender, and who are able to communicate with nature and the Earth. And the Eternal Warrior basically just acts as like their Guardian, so heroes protecting heroes. Number 10, The Immortal. With a name like The Immortal, you bet your socks this guy has been around for a hot minute. Due to an accident that happened approximately 3,000 years ago, the man who became The Immortal was exposed to an unknown anomaly that gave him superhuman abilities that put him almost on par with Vulturemites, making him one of the three known beings in the universe that can make that claim. But outside of his incredible strength, speed, durability, stamina, and flight powers, The Immortal is, you guessed it, a mortal, able to regenerate at an insanely fast rate, regrowing limbs and organs, not needing food, water, or oxygen to survive, and being immune to all poisons, toxins, venoms, viruses, bacteria, parasites, pathogens, and allergens. However, funnily enough, there is a way to quote, kill him. If the immortal's head is separated from his torso, it needs to be manually reattached for his healing factor to activate. But despite that, even when they aren't attached, he still remains perfectly preserved until the reattachment happens. He's been around for so long that he's been a knight possibly under King Arthur as Lancelot, an explorer under or possibly as Christopher Columbus in the Spanish Armada. He fought in the American Revolution, became president of the United States by taking the alias of this guy Abraham Lincoln you might have heard of and he fought as a soldier in the First World War. In the 1930s is when he officially became a superhero and more recently became a member of the Guardians of the Globe. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, why not show us you love us by clicking that like button. Hey. Click it! Number 9, The Darkness. The story featuring this host of The Darkness is so vicious and bloody, but also just so raw and emotional. I love it personally. While many think of a Jackie Estacado when they think of the darkness, he is not the only host the darkness entity has ever had, which honestly, if you're familiar with the story of Jackie, you probably also kind of know that because, you know, 
gets passed down. In fact, there were many, many who came before Jackie. Case in point, Estacado, the darkness host who is a leader of a Visgoth tribe during the final days of the ancient Roman Empire, circa 410 BC. After its downfall had really already begun, and some would say even kind of already concluded, I guess, Estacado is a known rebel against the Roman Empire and a powerful one at that, wielding the darkness in his fight against the last standing Roman legions. He ends up going head to head with Legatus and his legion after already dying and being resurrected by the darkness twice. While he offers Legatus a chance to surrender, Legatus knows he is doomed either way since the Roman Empire is coming to an end and so chooses not to back down as he doesn't really see surrendering as a real option given the punishment for doing so. Were they even able to make it back home at this point? As such, Legatus's legion falls and Estacado makes plans to march with his tribe to Rome. Number 8, Ogon Bat. Okay, Ogon Bat is a unique and cool character in his own right, but he was also one of the world's first superheroes ever, even technically coming before Superman. Originating from Japan as the god of justice and protector of the weak, his origin is that he was originally an Atlantean who was sent forward in time 10,000 years to defend the modern world from evil. He wields a scepter that fires bolts of energy, causes many earthquakes and slices through steel. He himself was immortal, could fly, breathe underwater, had x-ray vision, and possessed superhuman strength, speed, and invulnerability to bullets and lasers. He was summoned by a little girl who would call on on him causing a sparkle to appear around which then turned into a bat and then turned into the hero when it's found its enemy. It's very weird but we just roll with it. While he initially started as a comic, he also has a TV show that appeared in several different countries outside of Japan and I think he looks really cool. So yeah. Number 7, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Cosmic Ghost Rider is an interesting one. While I initially thought of the prehistoric Ghost Rider ghost when it came to old Ghost Riders, I realized that despite being from an alternate future, Cosmic Ghost Rider is also ancient. But you know, future ancient. Cosmic Ghost Rider is the spirit of Frank Castle, who ends up becoming the spirit of vengeance after he is killed during Thanos' invasion of Earth. In this version of the story, Thanos succeeds in basically destroying Earth, and by the time Frank returns, as Ghost Rider to the planet's surface, it's kind of too late for him to save his friends. He ends up alone on the planet, and after years and years of solitude, with no one left to avenge, becomes, well, insane, as I think pretty much almost anyone would. Despite eventually becoming Thanos' herald, CGR is really doing his best to be a good guy. He only ever really even joined up with Thanos because, you know, well, there was no one left and he didn't want to be alone. Before even joining up with Thanos, Cosmic Ghost Rider did attempt to get his revenge on the Mad Titan, teaming up with Galactus, but even Galactus fell in this fight against this alternate King Thanos. Number 6, Exodus. Grand Duke Benny du Perry was a 12th century nobleman from medieval France. Does that count as Ancient? I don't know, anyone who was around then, so I'm taking it and just running with it. Okay, cool. What you gonna do about it? Nothing, because I'm just an image on your screen. <laughs> As an adult, Bene was a crusader for the Knights Templar, sent to Jerusalem during the Crusades, and he even became best friends with Eobar Garrington, the Black Knight of that era. The two had set out on a quest to find the Tower of Power, when his abilities manifested after an encounter with the Phoenix Force, which were then improved further thanks to the mutant apocalypse. But thanks to Big Blue, Exodus was trapped in a tomb until the modern day when he was awoken by Magneto and joined his cause. Exodus is one of the most powerful psionic mutants in existence, with such a pristine use of telekinesis and telepathy that he can even alter electrons and molecules. His power is so strong that Marvel even had to debuff him by making his powers dependent on his or others level of faith in this mutant. Although he still regularly kicks some serious butt. Number 5, The Old Guard. Can we call the Old Guard heroes? I'm not really 100% sure on that. They are ancient warriors who have been many things over the years. Not all the things they've done were necessarily good, but I would say for the most part, they've tried to stay on the side of good, so I think I'm going to count them for this list. And that's definitely where they are at when it comes to where we meet them in the modern day. Or at least, you know, the direction they're headed towards, I would say. Initially, the Old Guard were a group of immortal mercenaries led by their oldest member, Andy, aka Andromica of Scythia, who is thousands of years old. It is in their welcoming of a new member that we get to see some of the good in them, despite them being essentially expensive, deadly, and nearly indestructible guns for hire. Their immortality is as much a mystery to them as it is to readers of the series, seemingly happening to each member miraculously and really without explanation 
explanation. One minute they were alive, the next dead, and then inexplicably, right back to living. In 2020, the Old Guard comics got their first film adaptation through Netflix. As with most Greg Rucka creations, the premise and his approach had me hooked, pretty much. Number 4. Medieval Spawn Okay, I'm gonna come right out and say this, I know nothing about Spawn. I did not watch the show, I never read the comics, I really have no right to be standing here in front of you talking about him, but I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not actually talking about THE Spawn, I'm going to be talking about Medieval Spawn. Naturally, Medieval Spawn was not only a hell spawn, but also a knight living in 16th century England. And if you think about it, knights were almost like medieval superheroes, with tales and stories all their own. Sir John of York fought during a civil war in England, but was released from his service to Henry II after he and three others mistook the king's anger for orders and went and took the life of the Archbishop of Canterbury. Now once he passed at the hands of his king's bodyguard, he was sent to hell for his crimes, where he made a deal with Malbolgia and returned as a hellspawn. He then went around England committing good deeds in the hopes of redeeming himself, but he continues to survive after being basically bonded to his armor and now possessing anyone who chooses to don his helmet. And I need to start reading Spawn. Right now. Number 3, Witchblade. While most people think of Sarah Pizzini when they think of the Witchblade, Sarah was not the only one to wield the blade, and was, in fact, by far the first. One of the oldest Witchblade wielders was actually Samantha. Samantha hails from ancient Roman times, though she herself is not Roman, but instead was a native of an old Celtic town that they overtook named Cecilia. At least I think its name was Cecilia. There's also a character in the story with her that's named Cecilia, so that's a little confusing, but I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. Samantha was enslaved, but would eventually escape and end up running into druids out in the countryside, who believed she was the one who would be destined to save the other Celts from the Romans. She was given the Witchblade and would set out on a mission to destroy all Romans. While a hero ultimately, I would say at least of her own story, Samantha's tale and alignment is pretty complex, which is often what makes Witchblade hosts like her so interesting. Number 2. Martian Manhunter You know, I didn't actually know how old Martian Manhunter is. I knew that he was the last of his race of Martians, and I know that he is extremely powerful and should never be slept on. And I know that he speaks with the resolve and intelligence of someone who has seen some serious shiznet. But when I found out that according to DC, he is in the ballpark of around or over 220 million years old, I gotta say, I took a moment to just digest that. John Johns, or John Jones if you want to be rude and go by his human name, arrived on Earth after he was pulled there by a teleportation beam during an experiment conducted by Dr. Saul Erdl, who brought him through space and time and then passed away from the shock of actually finding a Martian. This is because John's race was practically wiped out a long, long time ago, leaving him completely alone and isolated. But now on Earth, with no one to tell him what the hell was going on, he eventually used his shapeshifting abilities to become a detective operating in Middletown America. For a long time, he mainly operated from the safety of his human persona before he eventually exposed himself to the world and became a founding member of the Justice League and also one of its most powerful members. Just saying. Number one. Ghost Rider. Way before Johnny Blaze was even ever born, there was Ghost. Ghost is the original Ghost Rider, or at least believed to be the original Ghost Rider, the initial spirit of vengeance. Retroactively, anyways, as he made his first comic book appearance after Johnny Blaze, historically, appearing in Marvel Legacy issue number one from 2017. So obviously that's pretty recent, but you know, canonically, one of the first. Ghost became the first Ghost Rider during the prehistoric era and did so in order to defeat the mysterious Wendigo, who took over his pack, becoming their leader, only to eat the pack members, save for Ghost. Ghost would stumble upon a snake and speak its real name in order to become Ghost Rider, the spirit of vengeance. He also has a cool mammoth, or he had a cool mammoth, and then he got another mammoth, and I think that mammoth's gone too, but he likes mammoths. He would go on to join up with the Avengers of 1 million BC. 